Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Just before we get started with this week's webinar, just wanted to make sure that all your systems are working effectively for you. Uh, on this screen, you'll see some instructions to make sure that you've got a browser that is compatible. Last week, we had a few people who were unable to view the presentation. You can also do a test of your system by following the link at the bottom of the screen. So we'll see you all back here in uh, about three to four minutes. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our second webinar in this series. My name is Charles Alder. I'll be your host this morning. For those of you who uh, may have had some issues last week, please uh, pay attention to the slide in front of you. Uh, if you wish to do a final test of your system, uh, you can do that there, but I'll leave that there just a bit shortly. Okay. So this morning, we're going to be talking about building good businesses in small towns. Today's presenter will be uh, Peter Kenyon, who was our presenter last week. And joining us today is Tom O'Toole, the uh, world famous baker from the Beechworth Bakery. Just to, uh, to get started, thank you. Thank you all for coming. As I said, uh, we'd firstly like to uh, welcome to country and acknowledge the traditional owners on whose land we meet today recognising traditional owners Australia-wide for their continuous connection to the land. We pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. I'd like to thank Bushels once again for supporting this community endeavour. Uh, hopefully you've all got a cup of tea or coffee. It's going to be a rapid hour of great information. Today's event will again be recorded and will be uh, auto-emailed to all registrants uh, about an hour after the presentation this morning. The following information will also be uh, the presentation and slides and handouts from today will be available on the Rural Aid and Bank of Ideas website after the presentation. Most of you will see that we've got the chat on the right hand side of the screen and thank you to all of you who've been signing in and saying hello. Hello to all of you. It's great to have you on board and we hope that you get some great information out of today's session. So once again, uh, today we're joined by Peter Kenyon from the Bank of Ideas. As we mentioned last week, Peter is a fantastic and massive supporter across the whole of Australia uh, when it comes to small and country town renewal. 
He has many a, a fabulous idea about how we can engage our country towns, um, how they can uh, rebuild themselves, and uh, particularly with the focus right now in relation to COVID-19. So uh, I'll shall I introduce Peter and uh, we will get this morning's session started. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Kenyon. Good morning. Good morning, Charles. And uh, thank you and thank you, Rural Aid, for again your uh, commitment in organising these webinars and, and just your commitment to rural Australia. I think it's in, been incredibly inspiring what you do and what you continue to kind of like do. Um, good morning to all of our participants this morning. Um, it is great to know that we've got people across uh, the country, across New Zealand. We've even got people coming in from the US today. But uh, it's just great to come together to reflect on where are we at, particularly in light of COVID-19, and where can we go to? Um, I particularly also, like Charles, want to acknowledge all traditional owners, wherever we're meeting today and wherever you are, I just acknowledge those leaders and thank you for your incredible stewardship of looking after this continent for up to 70,000 years. It certainly has been a crazy time uh, in terms of uh, COVID-19, our lives, community life, our family lives, our working lives have certainly been turned upside down. But I also hope for you that last week also was a, a wonderful opportunity to also uh, again see community in action, to see the social solidarity, the community solidarity, neighbour kind of like looking after neighbour. And also for me, I love the continuing sense of kind of like humour that continues. A friend of mine in Tassie sent me uh, their neighbour's kind of like message to the street when all this is over. Which meeting do I attend first, Weight Watchers or AA? And I'm sure all of us can have a sense of identifying with that particular neighbour kind of like comment. But as I said, our lives have been turned upside down and particularly um, when it comes to the whole area of small business, to the number of people that have actually lost their, their employment, the fact that something like two thirds of people had one or zero days notice of losing their, their work. And we've also just seen how many businesses have just had their entire customer base kind of like wiped out. Obviously, some businesses have done well during this time. And the latest figures out of the Australian Bureau of Statistics show that in March, overall disposable household and particularly retail uh, expenditure was actually up by 9%. And there were certain businesses that did incredibly well. Uh, hardware and gardening, for example, 17% kind of like growth there. Electronic game shops, 11% have kind of like grown. But then most businesses, in fact, we're talking over 85% of businesses have actually lost customer share. And as I mentioned, many people within the arts, particularly in tourism, within hospitality, have also lost probably 100%. People just in, in clothing and shoes, for example, we just saw a massive drop there in people's disposable income, around about 23% drop in those type of areas. So look, this has been a tough time, a tough time for most businesses. Many of them now with the assistance of the government's both job seeker and job keeper programs are now in the process of trying to reopen and reactivate themselves. And so this workshop, I think, this particular webinar today is very, very appropriate in terms of what is it that we need to do to kind of like be different in terms of coming out of a world uh, uh, that is uh, been one of hibernation for a few weeks and for some businesses months, and now to find the world is not what it was back as it was in December 2019. The world has changed and particularly People's um, shopping patterns have changed. We know that prior to COVID-19, about one in eight purchases was done online. That's increased dramatically. And we know that it doesn't take long for a behavior to kind of like turn into a habit. So there's gonna be challenges for businesses as they reopen. We know also that many, many people are very fearful still of COVID-19 and catching COVID-19, afraid of crowded spaces. So the thought of people rushing back into main streets, back into restaurants, back into pubs, back into sporting events, back into special festivals that we might wanna put on. I think again, the reality is that many people are gonna take a long time to feel comfortable about moving back into those particular spaces. So how do we as businesses kind of like cope? 
And I think this is a great time that we reflect and begin to ask ourselves, how do we think different? How do we think smarter? How do we kind of like think kind of like uh, um, in new ways? And today we're going to hear from who is my number one hero in all this, Tom O'Toole. But let me share one other great hero of mine. I don't know if you remember this woman. She died about 10 years ago. Her name was Anita Roddick. She is the founder of the famous Body Shops. I think what most people don't understand, though, is her origins. This young woman, age 25, started up a very first body shop in the British town of Brighton. She was unemployed. She was a single mum. Her partner had left her to ride a horse across South America. She had to, uh, she had to borrow £2,000 to kind of like open a business. She only had nine products to put on the shelf. But back there, she initiated the body shops. And within 12 months, she was a phenomenal success. In fact, that shop turned over in that first year over 10 million pounds in kind of like retail sales. Phenomenal for a young woman who was unemployed, had very little financial assets, a single mum, but had a brilliant idea. But above all, she thought different. The very first thing that she thought about doing was where she located a shop and she chose to locate it between two undertakers and call it the body shop. Well, the public loved her sense of humour, and we're going to talk a bit about humour today, played a very big part in it. Within 10 years, she was the second most recognised brand in the United Kingdom. And by the time she died, uh, as I said, just over a decade ago, she had body shops in over 80 countries of the world. Phenomenal, kind of like success story. I love reading a story and certainly one of the best books I recommend people to track down. It's not easy to get now. You've got to go online and it's obviously through often secondhand shops. But this book called Body and Soul, where she doesn't just capture her thoughts on how to run a good business and how to be an entrepreneur, but how to be a community citizen, how to care about community, how to care about the environment and above all, how to build strong economies. And I love one of those one-liners within the book, which really is the setting for today. You've got to be hungry for ideas to make things happen and to see your vision made into reality. And certainly for me, as we reflect on um, where our small towns can go, how do we build these strong communities? One of the things I've learned is our towns have got to be idea friendly. They've got to be idea obsessive. They've got to constantly be encouraging the discussion of good ideas and encouraging people, their entrepreneurs, and particularly the businesses to begin to kind of like think outside the box. Last week, we introduced these webinars to say that really when you look at the evidence about what builds a strong town. There were really four critical themes that came through. And over the remaining set of um, webinars that we run, we're now going to drill into some of these. And obviously today we're drilling into part of number four. How do we develop within our community strong economic development behaviours? And, and obviously focusing on our existing business space is important. But those other issues we'll keep touching upon and they will come through. And particularly, um, I'm so thrilled that we got Tom O'Toole here this morning to share his thoughts about leadership and particularly about this positive mindset. If there's some guy who's actually influenced me about the fact that it's our mindset that actually is the starting point for change, it's actually Tom. And then obviously, to have a healthy economy, you, have a, you need a healthy community. And the two are really the two sides of the same coin. But when it does come to that strong community economic development behaviours, we introduced last week that concept that really every town needs to consider to have a care strategy. We need to be involved in how we are fostering new business initiative. And we'll talk more about that in future weeks. How do we take people who over these last few weeks have been sitting in their kitchen and their lounge room and their garage and their backyard thinking up new ideas? How do you help people in your town take a good idea and turn it into a commercial reality? How do we begin to attract outside resources, whether they be uh, new businesses, whether they be investment, whether they be visitors to our town. We'll talk a lot about that next week when we focus particularly on the role that tourism plays in rural communities. But this morning, 
I really want us to kind of like focus on the RE bit, the retention and expansion. And we know that if we're interested in cre recreating jobs, then, you know, most jobs don't come from creation or attraction. They come from existing businesses doing better, growing, expanding and taking on more people. And so this morning, it's really appropriate that we really focus in on what builds kind of like strong businesses within our communities. I love humor and I love this particular John McCaffrey quote, the mechanics of running a business are really not that complicated when you get out of the essentials. You have to make some stuff and sell it for more than cost you. That's about all there is to it, except for a few million details. And this morning, through the, the words and experiences of Tom, we're really keen to try to dig into what are those three few million details? What is it that's actually involved in running kind of like a strong, profitable kind of like business? And certainly for me, one of the best examples of that is this town called Beechworth. I can remember this town in the early 80s. It was a dying town and had kind of like two industries, an asylum and a jail. Um, it was an old gold mine town that really was kind of like dying and contracting. And within this community, within this dying community, where much of the town was padded up with galvanized iron, arrives kind of like a, a young man by the name of Tom O'Toole, who as the baker, buying the bakery that he once owned and the bakery that he had uh, spent time in, began to kind of like create a business that really has actually become a, a light pole for many of us across the country in terms of what can happen. When you consider Beechworth is on a road to nowhere, it's three hours out of a capital city, and yet this guy has created an amazing business. We'll talk about the book that uh, Tom has written and, and so on that captures a lot of it, but I love one statement in it. Today, people would say, gee whiz, wasn't Beechworth smart in saving all of its buildings and heritage? It wasn't the smartness of the town, it was the it's bloody poverty. No one would spend any money on the town. It was a town slowly dying. Today, it's very much a tourism town, but it's still on the road to nowhere. In 1984, when I brought the bakery, people didn't say I was going for a drive to Beechworth unless you're going to visit a mad auntie in the lunatic asylum or one of their relations in the jail. Then it was a government town. Look at Beechworth today. It was a hive of activity. But when I came here in 1984, all the shops were boarded up. And I suppose what we are excited about is how does someone take a business like that, that kind of like employed um, two part-time staff, had a turnover of uh, only $100,000, uh, opens it with kind of like six full-time staff and then creates what is the biggest turnover uh, bakery within Australia in a small town of 4,000 people, three hours out of a capital city. To me, it is an incredible story that all of us, I'm sure, are going to benefit from both just the insights, the wit and the humour of this person called Tom O'Toole. You know, the Beechworth Bakery is an inspirational story. You can see the facts about it. And Tom hasn't just done it in Beechworth. We'll learn more the fact that he's actually replicated his model of a good business in seven other towns around Victoria. And currently those Beechworth bakeries in the eight towns employ over 300 people. He's one of our biggest kind of like private employers in regional Australia. And I think Tom has really demonstrated how, what all of this Thanks, is about. Uh, Let's have so a look at his story now. For, uh, Tom O'Toole on video, hang on. Yeah, I'm, a baker. I'm, I'm a, a baker. I'm a baker. I'm a baker. I'm a baker. I'm a baker. Thank you, Colin. Thank you. Look, I'm a baker. Look, that's my comfort zone in a bake. What have I got a baker here for? I'm bucket of I know. Look, I am no big time businessman. I'm no bloody guru. In fact, I'm a kindergarten dropout. I failed kindergarten and these buggers have got me along here to talk to you. I thought it was fantastic. At the beginning I was thinking, oh, what's this guy about? But um, I thought it was fantastic. This crowd from South Africa. And they said to me, Tom, how come these buggers are desperate to give you money? What do you do? What do you do? I said, well, we do a lot of in-house training. They said, but, 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 what if you train them and they leave? And I said, what if you don't train them and they stay? I think if anyone could take away half the enthusiasm that he's got uh, and put it back into their business, uh, they'd be in, the, in, in a great condition. Oh, I thought he was great. He full of energy and 
quite inspirational, so it almost makes you want to be a baker. <laughs> I heard one of my staff say one day, you'd think they'd have something to eat before they come out. Look, 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 human nature has never changed. All the customer wants you to do is look at me. Oh, bull, can't they see I'm busy? Nick off, nick off, nick off, let me play my computer. Look, I believe business is so simple, most of us miss it. Don't get simple and easy mixed up. You know, we get so tied up in spreadsheets and in flowcharts and in data and statistics. And all the customer wants is, look at me. He's larger than life and just sort of captured the attention of, of all of us. You know, we just, you know, warm to him so easily. He's great. Look, if you're not determined to stand out, your bloody history. There's so many Me Too products, Me Too businesses, Me Too, Me Too, Me Too. If you're not determined, utterly, totally determined to get out of your comfort zone and do that little bit extra, your bloody history. There's no excitement in being average. Full of energy for a guy that's, I don't know, I guess late 50s or early 60s or something like that. He's got an amazing amount of enthusiasm leaping around the stage like that. It's just absolute ton of energy, really great. to our slides. So Pete, we're just introducing Tom. Hopefully Tom can, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, you're about to meet Tom O'Toole. I don't know, have you got me, Charles? We've got you, Tom. Okay. How are you this morning? No, I'm good. I was watching that video and I was the buggers mad, but then... <laughs> Oh. All right. Well, who's uh, look? Uh, look, I am no guru. So uh, Peter Kenyon is the guru. I'm. I'm. I am just a baker. <laughs> well, Peter, uh, Tom, if you want to turn your uh, camera on, we can see you there. I think I've turned it on for you. No, you haven't. But anyway, I I can hit yes. But oh, there you. Go. Yeah, I can see myself now. Um, there you go. Okay. Okay. So Peter. Well, yep. Yeah. Look, I am in business and it's far from perfect. I want to make that clear right at the start. It's far from perfect. But uh, Peter, you're, you're the man with all the, all the intelligence and, the, and uh, information. What are you going to tell us? I can't hear him. You can't hear him? No, I can't hear Peter. See his mouth going, but that'll be good if I can't hear him, I suppose. <laughs> I tell you. But... Uh, Look, bakery, oh, nine o'clock in the morning. Um, I can remember one day being there and there was close to 300 people. I visited three other bakeries. One had two, one had one, and one had none in the region, and you had 300. How do we make dough your way? Oh, look, look, I am in business, been in business a long time, and uh. And like you said, uh, business, we, we can get too tied up in everything else. I'm in business to serve the customer. That's the only business I have. I'm, is I'm not in business to, you know, we all think we're in business to make bread and cakes, but I'm in business to serve the customer. And um, and today, it is, it's a very different world. I've been in business, I've been through recessions and all that sort of stuff. been in business now, I don't know. 48 years or 47 years or something like that. But anyway, never have I experienced anything like this, you know, where, uh, uh, you know, often I've had over the years big queues outside, but they've been waiting to get in because there's been too many people in my shop. Today they're waiting to get in because we're only allowed a, two or th in at a time or something. It's just total um, insanity. But I, I have noticed... Um, uh, the shops that are going well in Beechworth at the moment, uh, the owner operated, they're in there, they're being able to communicate with the customers and, and it's wonderful to see. Uh, some of the shops decided to shut, but a lot of them have opened and they haven't had many customers because not many people around, but they've given that customer service. And it's wonderful to see because that's that's what we're in business for. But Especially in regional Australia, we forget, you know, we, we get our resentments on these buggers because they go to the capital, they go to the bigger regional centres and spend their money. And then when they come into our shop, we're not that super friendly and uh, we, we get these little uh, 
and the resentments will kill us. That will kill us, especially in regional Australia. We cannot, we cannot get uh, resentful about the other shopkeepers and the other guys that are doing well. We, we've all got to work together. And uh, I, I must admit, in Beechworth now, Beechworth's go, been going very well for many years, but we've been a little bit down the last few years, mainly because I believe, uh, while we're not working together as a, as a community so good, but um, we've had the cruise industry has been so huge in Australia. The cruise, a couple million people a year have been doing a cruise. So then people haven't had that disposable income to come out and visit regional Australia. And I believe that now these cruise ships, and I like cruise ships, um, uh, but uh, they're, they're, that's not going to be, and these people are going to be out visiting regional Australia. But I must admit, a lot of these people, when they come out from the city, they think, oh, everything should be cheaper in the country. I don't know why they get this idea from. They're shocked that uh, we, we've got very similar prices to to, to the city. and uh, but, um, but we can give them that, that service that I think, um, and you'll see great places in the city that give great customer service because that's what it's all about. And especially in regional Australia, that's what we've got to be careful. But we've got to work together. And in, in Beechworth at the moment, we've got different areas. We've got we've got the incredible um, bike culture that is building up this push bike and the trail rides and the, uh, off road, you know, the mountain bike, uh, just magic. And then, then we've got the food and wine. We've got the, one of the best wine districts in Beechworth has its own wine district and, and wonderful. We, we've got a couple incredible breweries now in Beechworth, Bridge Road and Bilson's Brewery. And then we've got the heritage, the history, Ned Kelly, and we've got the beautiful, we have living history. So there's three distinct areas. And to me, that we are not working together as one. If we work together as one, wow, Beechworth would be out there on top of everyone's list to come and visit. And that is a whole secret. I think in any regional town, you've got to stop, keep, keep away from the energy suckers. There's lots of dream takers out there who say, oh, we can't work with them. You know, they're bloody, they're, they're, they're all about push bikes or they're all about food and wine or they're all about living history. And we have got living history and we have got the culture of the bikes, which is a great, great, great thing. And, and the food and wine is magic. We've got three incredible what are you famous for we got three wonderful things that we're famous for but we got to get out there and tell people we got to invite people to beachworth it's okay having all these beautiful old buildings and the great rail trails and the food and wine but you've got to invite the people and when you invite the people you got to treat them lovely you got to treat them like kings and queens you know what's the sense of inviting them if you then uh, then you have yeah. a resentment when they don't spend it's enough true. money or, or or they're talking up one of the other oppositions. We've it's got true. to work together because teamwork works. We're either pulling together or we're pulling apart. And that's what happens in regional Australia. We get these little resentments and some of them go back for so long. So anyway, <laughs> Peter, you just got to shut me up. Tom, one of the things you're known for is your creativity, and people have had a chance to see some of the slides of the things that you do. How important is fun, entertainment, intrigue, giving people that wonderful experience? Can you tell us a bit about how important you put on your importance in that? Well, it is. You know, like uh, uh, we believe uh, making a bit of fun, we do in a bit of baking i've got to do some on uh, on online this week and, and marty my business partner he's had his couple kids in and people have loved it love seeing these kids having fun but it is it is this is hard work uh having these special events and getting involved in the festival it costs you money but it costs you time it costs you that commitment but you've got to be in their boots and all 100 percent. that commitment you know we, we did lots of wonderful, uh, fun stuff, and we got to get back into that again because people want to, you know, they want to enjoy themselves. You want to come out for, uh, we need to have uh, this living history. No good just having history. We got to be, much, bring it alive. And I, I think um, 
having having uh, that fun. It's wonderful for the staff. It gets them out of the comfort zone because everything you want is just outside your comfort zone. And if you want customers to come in and to and to be happy, you've got to get out of your comfort zone and do uh, and do something a little bit different. And that is what really, really put us on the map. A lot of years ago, we got out there and did a lot of stuff different. And, uh, you know, we had every dress up day, oh, pain in the bum, you know, embarrassing. We had pajama days way. We were the first, as far as I know, in Australia to have pajama days. I picked up this idea over in America and uh, some little show, had a little bakery had had it and, uh, and uh, and uh, I took that on board oh, 30 years ago, and it was a big, big thing. It's not so much now; it's been used all over Australia. But we've had all sorts of dress-up days. We've had lots of uh, involvement in in the community because that's it. We've got to have a strong community. We've got to be a part of the community because the locals are what keep us going and especially in this coronavirus that's what's kept us going is because we've been part of the community and but it's very hard to have fun when there's no there's no energy you need people for that energy there's not many people there so um i can see peter your mouth going i don't know whether you're talking to me or not but anyway but it is about having fun. It's about, you know, if, if you're happy, tell your face, you know. Yeah. Tom, a, a number of our um, participants are keen to hear how has your business been changed since COVID-19? But before we move to that, can you just tell us one thing? How important are your staff in the running of your business? How important are the staff in terms of the outcomes you've achieved? Now, look, that's, that's probably the biggest secret of our business um, is our staff take that ownership. Our staff, my business runs without me. Um, I do not have a management position. Uh, my managers and my staff, uh, uh, they run on systems and procedures and I run on chaos and they don't want to run on chaos. They want to have systems and procedures so they know what's going to happen. We're uh, a bit with me, I'm, I'm not, are not good on systems and procedures and uh, I am but my own systems and procedures but I have a I'm not it's not wired up properly here so uh, look my staff are my business With, without without my staff I haven't got a business and, and that was it I had this one little business in Beechworth which become a big business but I was going to lose some of my top people so for me to grow I had to go I had to build my business so to keep my people with it, to give them an opportunity to be managers and supervisors, to give them a career path. And we have had wonderful, uh, my business partner, he did his apprenticeship and now he's my business partner and he runs the show today. And then we have Beck, who's one of his, she's second in charge and she, she went to uni, but she did work at us when she was young and then she went to uni and she come back and she's, and then now HR, oh, I don't know what's it, but her, 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 uh, anyway, but look, without staff, I don't have a business. They are the most important thing. And that is why we put a lot, a lot into training. We, we do a lot of this, um, the staff take this ownership and, and they've taken this ownership through this coronavirus, they, they're really, um, and they're doing deep cleaning, they're doing, uh, they're all doing that little bit extra. And, uh, you know, I think that a lot of them want to escape from home, but uh, they're happy. And that's it. If I, have happy, if I have happy staff, I have happy customers. This is not rocket science. If I have happy staff, I have happy customers and the money keeps pouring in. But I've got to have happy staff, got to have happy staff. And Tom, can you just tell us a little bit more? How do you invest in your staff in terms of training? And I know you've sent a number of your young people overseas to visit bakeries. You'll send them to New Zealand to help out another bakery, all about your staff development. Can you tell us a bit about that? Oh, boy, we do so much of that. <laughs> Uh, it cost me a bloody fortune. Um, yeah, look, uh, we, we do do, we will send them to uh, uh, other bakeries. We'll send them to trade shows. We have sent them to America a few times to bakeries and trade shows to Germany. Uh, 
to New Zealand. Uh, uh, we need to do more of that. But it is expensive, but you can just uh, send them to Melbourne and they can pick up incredible. It's just to get an idea. Ideas are great, but action is a magic work. You've got to put it into action. and But you, you've got to always have that carrot for the staff so they can do training uh, computer courses we do we do massive lots of training and and we are still doing and that has been very difficult uh, with the virus uh, because we haven't been able to do a, that sort of stuff so we're doing a lot of online stuff but uh, but it's not the same we need to get out there and 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 look for fresh ideas and fresh ways and uh, just to break that pattern, to always break, because we get into this comfort zone. We keep doing the same thing every day and we expect a different result. And that's the same as in these regional towns. We're slowly, slowly dying because no one wants to put their hand up and say, look, let's get involved. Let's do, let's push our name out there. And this is what I did in the early days. I pushed the name out there Beechworth, Beechworth, Beechworth Bakery, Beechworth, all the time Beechworth. And that has been, and now that has sort of worked against us a little bit in some of the other towns because we're not in Beechworth, we're in Bendigo and we're in Bright and we're in Ballarat, but our brand has been strong enough for people want to come in and experience a bit of that Beechworth culture because you, you've always got to build that culture to see it through the customer's eyes. It looks very different from where the customer's standing. It looks very, very different. Tom, I've always admired the way you've always pushed Beechworth first, even before pushing a bakery. It's about Beechworth, Beechworth. And I heard someone say, you've been up yourself calling the Beechworth Bakery in, in Bright and in Bendigo and uh, in uh, Ballarat. Uh, um, tell us, why did you keep the name? when you Well, it's very different. If I'd called it Tom and Marty's or Tom and Jerry's, it wouldn't have meant anything. So we, 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 when we started up our second bakery in Echuca, we bought it. Uh, somebody else had did their dough on it, built this massive big business, and we called it Beechworth Bakery. Well... We, we were just having a slow opening. We didn't tell. We did it quietly. Well, we were inundated that first day um, because our brand, our brand was Beechworth Bakery. And I must admit there was, a, there was one councillor there. He was not happy. He was not happy. With a sort of, oh, that it wasn't good. We didn't, a couple of them give us a hard time about signage. We couldn't call it Beechworth Bakery. And, uh, and you know, we, we had to show them, you know, the, the, the Bendigo Bank, you know, how can we be, 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 be have Bendigo Bank in, we've got a Beechworth Bakery in Bendigo. And they said, well, we, well yeah, how can you have a Beechworth Bakery in Bendigo? Well, we have a Bendigo Bank in Beechworth. And that is our brand. And that has been very difficult. Bright, you know, bright that is very close to us. It's only four beautiful town, absolutely wonderful town, bright. And uh, it's in, uh, you know, uh, uh, and that's our brand, Beechworth Bakery. And, and it's very difficult. If we called it, uh, you know, uh, Idlewise or, or whatever we wanted to call it, it'd be very difficult. We'd be just another me too. But Beechworth Bakery worked years and years on this brand, on 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 this culture that we built up on our staff culture on on you know the whole lot and, and you know it's it bit like i said business is simple it's it, 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 you know it, you sell more spend less and manage better and that's what we're trying to do in bright and in bendigo but it is uh, that's our brand that we're stuck with just like bendigo bank and they've made it work uh throughout australia you know and uh, uh we we've so far managed it in 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 eight towns to have beechworth bakery and it's worked for us and some people get their back up and they get a little bit resentful i've got people in beechworth that never come into my shop and there's nothing i can do i you know uh uh, I've upset somebody at times or something and uh, or they've got a, a cold coffee or something. I, I can't please everyone. Uh, and I learned that a long time ago. If I try and please everyone, I'm just going to kill myself uh, trying. But I try hard to please uh, as many as we can. Yep. Tom, a number of people are really keen to, uh, to, uh, to hear about, um, are very keen to hear about 
COVID-19, how's your business model changing? What are you doing different? What's your advice to businesses that are about to reopen in the coming weeks into a new world that certainly wasn't there back in December 2019? What have you done as a business model and what is it you'd recommend to other people? Well, I think what it's done for a lot of people uh it's i think they've and i think for my staff what it's done it's realized and i keep pushing with our customers we don't have a business yeah we can make all the bread and cakes we can do all that stuff but with our customers uh, we don't uh you know we don't have a job and i think that's really uh, and i've been preaching that forever forever and now i think it's realized uh, and they're very grateful to have customers walking in that door. And I think that's going to make help our business more so than ever, that we have got to, we've got to honour, we've got to be, we've got to really appreciate and be grateful that these people are coming in and spending their dollars in Beechworth. Well, we have a, a good online presence. We have a, a presence. We have a, a great loyalty card. And we've got tens of thousands of these loyalty cards. So we've been able to keep in contact with our customers, which has been wonderful. Uh, that has been a real godsend that we have that loyalty card because, you know, we've dropped down. We're in the cafe, bakery, uh, you know, we're in the hospitality game. So, you know, we can only have a couple of people in the shop at times not 100 people, not 50. We, we can seat a couple hundred people, but we can't seat anyone at the moment. So it's a different world. But um, what it is, it's all about, it's all about looking after the customer. It's all about being grateful, I think. And uh, and that's all we've got to offer. And But we've got to come up with some new lines and we have come up with some new lines. We've been experimenting uh, with uh, different pies, uh, different sausage rolls. We've been doing some different cakes. Uh, so people will be coming in to uh, to experience uh, some of that stuff. We, we're doing a more of an online presence out there. It's not good, I must admit, buying a chocolate eclair or a vanilla slice online. It doesn't taste real good when you get it in the mail a couple of days later. But we are being able to push our brand out there a bit, but we will be doing some incredible specials and that will be, we'll be having some of our great, um, uh, our great specials, uh, you know, uh, buy one uh, for 10 cents and get the next, uh, you know, uh, uh, buy one at our regular price, get the next one for 10 cents. We'll be doing a lots of that stuff. We'll be doing lots of promotion to get people in that door. We've got to get them in that door because everyone's going to be, look, there's a lot of people aren't going to open, but they, you know, some people shouldn't have been in business in the first place. They've got tired. They've got off. They forgot what their goal was when they went in there. They've, 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 they've rented their headspace out to uh, negativity because it's, it's so easy to be negative because because it requires no effort at all but to be positive you've got to get off your bum and have a go and and you've got to be you've got to be you've got to be passionate you've got to be enthusiastic if your heart's not in it uh get out you know if your heart's in it the sky's the limit get in there Boots and all, 100%. You know, don't stick on the edge. Get in there. Get in there and say, right, I'm going to push this brand. I'm going to get them to my town. You've got to talk up your town. Because if I can get them to Beechworth, I've got a chance of getting a dollar out their pocket. First, we've got to get them to Beechworth. And like I said, that works against us when we're in Bendigo. But we have that brand. And that's what we're all about is looking after the customer. And... And, and you know, we can only grow our business one customer at a time, one cake at a time, one pie at a time. You know, Tom. but we, be, we be, look, we do. We become shop blind, town blind, community blind. We become blind to the opportunities. We're all out there looking. The grass always looks greener everywhere else. It, you know, you've got to go beyond your own backyard to realise how good we can have it in regional Australia. To me, success is being able to live the life the way I choose. And I choose 
to live in regional Australia. I wouldn't live anywhere else. That is success for me. Anyway, Peter, I, I think this coronavirus has given us lots more opportunity. It's given us a time to sit back and really look at our business and to say, well, what can we do different? What are the opportunities? What is out there? And there's a lot of our people out there who want good customer service. Yep. And Tom, is this a time also for businesses in the town to be thinking, how do we hold hands better? How do we support each other? How do we create lines to each other where we're on recommending each other? Um, how do we start working better together? Is is the whole collaboration, networking and partnership a time now that people have got to think fresh and say, you know what, that's going to be needing in the new world? Oh, very, very, very much so. And luckily, my business partner, Marty, who's younger, got more energy than me, and he is talking with the different, because we're. And this is our time. This is when everyone in regional Australia should pull together, especially in regional towns, because if you do not talk up your town, your kids are going to leave, you're, you've got to talk it up. We've got to, we can't get resentful on all these little trucks that are coming in from the bigger centres selling food, selling everything. People are buying everything online. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to give the customer service, try and get them people back. We've got to work together. We've got to talk up what we can do in our regional town. We've got to work together. You know, we, like I said, we're either pulling together or pulling apart. You know, working together works if you want it to work. And that's it. You've got to get your ego into check and get your resentments. There's no good being, you know, negative. Being negative requires no energy at all. But to be positive, you've got to get off your bum and have a go. And that is it, to talk to the other peoples and say, look, we could do this better. Talk to all the different areas. we got to talk it up and we've got to work together. We really do have to work together in this day and uh, more so than ever before, I think. Yep. And Tom, how do we also get more connected to our communities at the present time? One of the things that coronavirus has done is certainly get people talking to the neighbour, people are walking more in the streets, people have become much more back to basics and are much more home and town kind of like uh, connected. How do our businesses get more connected to their community? I mean, many of them depend on the community, but they are all often ignore their community. How have you connected with your community and what would you recommend to other town businesses about their relationship? with their local community i think yeah it all takes time and, and and to be connected and you know get involved get involved in the committee get involved in the chamber of commerce get involved get, uh, even stick your neck up and say look i want to invite the business people in and put on put on a um a, biscuits and cheese and a few bottles of wine, get the winery involved or get, get, get a cafe involved and get the people in and get them talking and have a blackboard up and say, look, we're only going to talk positive because there's so much negativity out there. Get involved. Stick your hand up. It takes time and you think, oh, I, haven't, you know, I want to watch television. Look, television is robbing you of your life one hour, two hour. Get involved. Get out there talking to the people. Get the businesses involved. Get one and then another one and then another one. Get like-minded. Get people who are going to be positive. Don't let the energy suckers and the dream takers just piss them off. Don't have, get don't get rid of them. Get rid of them. if they're an energy sucker in the in the meeting. Just say, look, sorry, uh, John. You've got to go. We we got to have positivity. We need people that are going to make it happen. And 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 honestly, you've got to get rid of the energy suckers and dream takers. And, and they love it. That's their station in life. You've got to realise that's what they love. They love being energy suckers. They love it being a dream taker. They love it. You've got to get rid of them and stick with the people that are going to have a go. And and you'll make things happen. I will guarantee you will make things happen. You know every. Lots and lots of regional towns have got so much to offer, but we all get comfortable. We sit at home. Oh, it's lovely and warm tonight. I don't feel like going out. 
look, make it at six o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, have biscuits and cheese and a few bottles of wine or cups of tea and coffee, put on free coffee, get the milky to supply the bloody milk, and then get the bloody cup of machinos flying, flying, get everyone to come in. They'll bloody love a free coffee and just say, look, what can we do? Talk your town up, get involved, get involved. Talk to the locals. It takes energy, I must admit. It takes energy. And, you know, I'm 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 old and grey and I keep out of the way because it but it's it is uh, it is about getting in there, boots and all. Get in there, talk to the people, talk it up. One town at a time, one shopkeeper at a time, one business at a time. Do you realize in a little town how many businesses? The electrician, the plumber, and they think, oh, look, we don't want to be involved. We've got enough to do. Well, you know, they need to get involved. Everyone's in business. We, you need a strong, vibrant business community. And that's what, what we've got to do is, is don't let all these outsiders come in and take over your regional town because in the end, you'll just be, you, you'll be nothing. You'll be disappear like lots of regional towns have. You, we, we, we've got to make the effort and go and talk to another shopkeeper, talk it up. But we're all too busy. Oh, look, I'm, I'm happy. I'm making me a few dollars. I'm making, I'm living, you know, but we've got to, we've got to make sure the town lives and it gets vibrant and strong. Yep. Tom, a lot of people who are listening to you today are in small towns many of them in small towns under a 1,000 people. Are there still good business opportunities in rural Australia? Is to live and work in, in small town Australia still viable, still an attraction to you? Oh, it is. Look, I wouldn't live anywhere. Uh, you said there's 4,000. I don't think there's 4,000 in Beechworth. But, look, I come from Tokemall, a small town. Uh, I've always lived in small town, lived in Augusta and WA, lived in Manangrita. You know, I've lived in small town. I love, and I think there's more opportunities out there than ever before, especially with social media and that. Don't let all the big boys take it. Yeah, Australia is the most urbanised country in the world, I think. But we need to get them, we need to get them into regional Australia because that's that's where life and living is. You know, I have, uh, I have my uh, six grandkids living in a small country in Beechworth and I love it. Uh, it and they wouldn't want to live anywhere else but often they will because we talk we we bag our towns we talk about we, we talk how hard it is and oh, all the doom and gloom and that's like you know that little chicken little story this little chicken got in the chookyard talking about oh how the sky is falling the sky is falling and everyone bloody believed this little chicken. And, yo, know, and then uh, and it wasn't falling at all. But this is it. We've got to talk up our towns. We've got to talk up the, the what the opportunities, what, how vibrant it is. Look, I, I was talking last year down in Gippsland. And there was there a guy who had a big business. And, and it was called uh, Gippsland stuff. And it was called a small, you know. And, and, and people were saying, look, you can't call it. You can't call it a regional town. You know, you've got to call it a bigger, it's it's bigger than that. And today that business is a big business and a big company has taken it on and that is going everywhere all over Victoria. And that is in regional Australia because regional Australia, most people see it as us as honest, as ethical, as, as, as um, we are committed, we are part of the community where, where you're invisible. I just read about this lady last week in the Weekly Times. You know, she was, she was in um, uh, Las Vegas, uh, no, in San Francisco, and her mother died. And, uh, and uh, she comes from a little small country town in Victoria. And uh, anyway, at the funeral, there was just a few people. And um, uh, no, her mother died in this small country town in Australia. She was living in San Francisco. Now, at a mother's funeral, there was over 300 people. And she thought if she died in San Francisco, to be lucky to be two dozen. And that is the difference. In regional Australia, we have got so much. And, uh, and this is what people come from the cities and think, wow. But we've got to invite these people to come and set up businesses in, in regional Australia, like Bilson's Brewery, well, Bridge Road Brewery, you get the jail, the old jail in Beechworth, what they're doing there. 
these are the people are coming from the cities and setting up in Beechworth, and it's one, and that is happening. If you invite them, all you've got to do is invite them. Yes. I think there's more opportunities out there than ever before in regional Australia, as long as we work together. As long as we work together. Tom, it's interesting. This week there's been a number of news articles about real estate agents are getting more and more inquiries from people in the city because of uh, coronavirus wanting to move to country uh, w, a, a country Australia. And it just seems to me this is an opportunity. Many people have discovered this thing called community. Many people want to be in the caring and, and back to basics. And lots of people are talking. We might see a movement we saw in the 1970s where many young people went off to discover that back-to-basics lifestyle in many of our rural towns. Well, certainly the interest is picking up, and uh, it was interesting to see that the number of inquiries and sales now happening in, uh, in rural Australia has actually increased during this time of COVID-19. But, Tom, one of the final areas I just want you to talk about, we've just thrown up a slide there, one of your famous quotes one thing I've always admired about you, Tom, is you're a continuous learner. You're never, ever satisfied that you know it all. You're always looking for another idea. How important has that been to the success of Beechworth Bakery? Oh, it, that, that, is, that is it. And now the staff are out there learning and looking, and, and that is it. Look, look, and, and a book will always take you beyond your own backyard. And what I do when I read a book, I'll write my brain will go, oh, geez, that's a good idea. But it mightn't be that. It just clicks something into my head and uh, uh, and I'll write it all. I wreck my books. I write all over them, these ideas. And But to go to trade shows, get out there and talk. You can see businesses. You can see communities that I think you drive in and think, wow, this town's, what's that? What is this all about? You can see it's alive. And that's it. Go to the places that are alive, that are doing stuff that's different. And uh, and uh, it is always you've got to keep learning. Like uh, I, I, the, the, the more I learn, the more I earn. And I, I I would love it when I learn something and then put it into place. Uh, but it, it's it's that action. Once you learn something, then you've got to you know uh, put it into action. You know that that goal setting. And I, I love, you know, uh, my, a lot of my success has been about goal setting and um, people say, oh, tell us something that we don't know. But most people don't write down their goals. Goals hold me accountable. Uh, you get got to set goals that will stretch you. And if you learn something new, it does stretch you. It does stretch you. And, and uh, uh, goals give me that purpose and direction. Without goals, I'm just drifting. I'm just drifting. And that's it. Lots of small regional towns do not have goals. They do not. They 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 don't. They 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 just they're just cruising along. They're just drifting along, drifting along, and soon they'll go over the bloody edge. You know, because you've got you've got to have you got to have uh, you got to have goals that 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 will that that hold you accountable. You know, goals give me that purpose. That goals give me energy. Goals get me out of my comfort zone. And and this is it. Learning something new gets you out of your comfort zone. Because most of us stop learning. We get we get comfortable. We get oh we get we get comfortable. Oh, you know, but no, you've got to keep learning. Gotta keep learning. Gotta keep going to the trade shows. Gotta keep learning. And and uh, I love books. I've read so many books and uh, I never could read. I, I'm um, a, a little bit uh, not wired. And, you know, I, I have uh, two of my grandkids living here and one's on the speed of autism. And uh, God almighty. Uh, he, and uh, I think I might have a little bit of it. God almighty. I, I take after him, I can tell you. But anyway, uh, but uh, it is about having that belief in yourself. Because of because the believers, the believers pick up the prizes in this life. And, and you know, uh, the, the, uh, and I believe the best is yet to come. And that's in regional Australia. I wouldn't live in this city for all the money in the world. How would you like to be with this coronavirus being stuck in a high rise or stuck in suburbia? 
this in the country, I don't feel I've been locked up at all. It's been beautiful, absolutely lovely. You know, you see people, you know, I haven't minded it at yeah. all. You know, yeah. uh, it's been good. Tom, we're almost out of time. Can you, and you've only got 21 seconds, what's your final advice to people who are about to go back into business after being socially isolated during this uh, coronavirus? What's your advice when they go back and open those doors, open that business, get it going? What's your one-liner advice to them? Okay. 21 seconds. Keep in touch with your dreams. We all have a dream in to go into business, to do this, to do that. Keep in touch with it and to look after the customer. That's it. You're in business to serve the customer. Serve them with a smile and, and you're going to make money. Great. Thanks, Tom. And look, um, many people have sent through some very interesting chat comments and we'll try to respond to them. Some of them are saying, Tom, where can we get more of your ideas and pick up your stuff? I know you made the offer that you've got 20 kits available um, and maybe the first 20 people who email, um, maybe we'll, we can distribute it from the Bank of Ideas. The first 20 people to send us it will send out one of the kits. But you also, your book is still available from all of the bakeries and also online. Is there anything else that you want to mention about resources? Oh, look, we have our old videos. I know I have a dark moustache and, uh, yeah, I have our videos and CD on a live recording. But I, uh, look, yeah, you can read all the books and that, but if you don't put it into practice, it's just, uh, yeah. it's just good ideas. But, um, uh, yeah, look... Uh, the book is old. It's old. It's still being reprinted. I told all the publishers, stop reprinting it. It's ancient. It's ancient. It's before social media. But uh, look, there is uh, there is resources out there. We have videos and that. We have uh, DVDs there. Uh, and there's a few of them on drop everything for the customer, on customer service and on goal setting and that sort of stuff. And they're cheap and uh, we're getting rid of them because people don't even use DVDs now. So it's all podcast and social media. But there is stuff out there, Peter. Peter, Peter I'll make sure that uh, we get links out to people for uh, Tom's books and uh, a bunch of his uh, videos. So uh, people check their emails a little bit later today. They'll find a whole bunch of information about Tom and, and links to where they yeah. can buy the book. Great. Well, listen, thanks, Tom. We really appreciate right. your honesty. See you later. And look, one of the things that Tom is great at is his sense of humour, the way that he's willing to can like uh, uh, be outrageous. And so as we close today, can I just show you a few slides about humour from a, a few businesses across Australia? I think humour is a powerful tool. As John Cleese, and I think we've just seen John Cleese in action here today, um, if I can get you to laugh, you'll like me better, which makes you much more open to my ideas. But uh, it's amazing to see uh, the type of humour that we actually see and the role that it actually plays in terms of it. I particularly love this one. No senior system discounts. You've been twice as long to get the money. If you can get people to laugh, you get their attention and so on in terms of where things are actually at. I love this one. Mexican food so authentic, Donald Trump would build a wall around it. You know, you've got to be outrageous. You've got to stand out from the crowd. And it just seems to me as you wander around the streets, uh, they're often uh, quite silent these days. It's the humour that gets you to actually stop. As I close, can I just remind you again, Anita Roddick and that wonderful book, she also, like Tom, had a formula for running a successful business. And I think it summarises very well what Tom has shared with us today. She once said, if you want to be successful, you need to be bold, you've got to be different, and you've got to be first. And I think today we've seen someone share his story with us that's actually captured that really well. Um, in closing, can I give you Tom's final advice? I love this one out of his book, Take the Risk, Turn Off the Television, Get Out There see what rural Australia has to offer. The future is right here in rural Australia. Thank you, Tom, and thank you for everything that you've shared with us. Thanks, Peter. Thank you. Thanks, Charles. Uh, thank you, Tom. It's been wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, next week's webinar is uh, again at uh, 10 o'clock next Tuesday. Uh, we'll be introducing uh, Mark Evans, who's the founder of the amazing tourism business Paranella Park, in North Queensland, and we're going to be talking about the role and opportunities of tourism in a post-COVID world, 2019.
Thank you all once again for joining us today. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Tom. It's been an inspirational morning. Um, just love the passion. I think it's what drives so many people in rural Australia to, to live there and stay there. And uh, let's hope in the next few years we can really rejuvenate rural Australia. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the morning and uh, have a great week.